Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, Forex, gold and S&P fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead starting the 1st of July. Hope you all had a great trading week and before we get started, I uh, just would like to ask if you please like, subscribe and share the video content uh, with on your trading platforms if you find the analysis that I do uh, of use every single Sunday. So, uh, getting into this week and starting off really on some trades that I've taken before really getting into the upcoming uh, fundamental and technical analysis. Uh, now, this was the Euro Yen. Euro Yen, bit disappointing this week. I think probably mistimed uh, the risk sentiment. Euro kind of went higher. I was short from last week. You can watch uh, last week's video, but this is just a, an update. So the euro uh, yen, uh, let's zoom down into the hourly, just show you some of the trades, which were a few losses, uh, one win. So trade I took last week, uh, and really the fundamentals behind this was really, um, and we'll get into it a bit deeper but <clears throat> later on in the video, but I was thinking that the risk sentiment was a bit would have been a bit more off heading into the week with um, the French elections, and so um, in a risk off environment or at least with risk events, um, typically what happens is the yen, uh, you know, does historically strengthen, uh, and because there was obviously a lot of uncertainty around uh, the elections, and it's been a bit of a change in um, the potential. Um, uh, leadership or there's about to be uh, if you uh, look at the polls um, I thought that the euro may sell off this week and apparently it didn't so it kept going higher and I entered into three positions last week and all three of those trades were stopped out that's fine you know it happens not too often of course quite rarely but it happens and um, I entered again um, into this really supply zone, this daily supply zone from uh, at the top of the uh, the market around here, managed to get actually one position um, at a one to one, and then uh, so basically what happened was is that when uh, prices came up uh, to this area, my first entry was around here, uh, second entry was fifty percent third entry was uh, right at the highs as pending orders and so when prices came up to this area here it triggered me into pretty much all three positions managed to get when prices spiked down managed to get a one-to-one -one there and then there was uh, but prices didn't come down far enough for me to trigger into these two positions so ended up uh, losing uh, two uh, and getting uh, one position on there so when prices kind of spiked up again on the Thursday um, and there was actually some good news for the uh, for the yen as well in terms of inflation but that just still wasn't enough really to to, to strengthen the uh, the yen uh, this week and um, yeah so pretty much out of uh, six trades or uh, I call it six positions because they're actually they're two separate trades it's just uh, you know that's one trade in total that's another trade and I just split them up into uh, three positions each. So uh, only really won one out of five, not too good on the euro yen. It was better elsewhere though, so we'll cover that as well. So the euro, silver euro uh, trade, which I'm currently in at the moment. And um, I'm actually in two positions on the uh, silver to euro trade. Now, um, the, uh, the entry, actually I haven't set this up, correctly uh it was this week so it was uh i think it was here uh, uh actually no it's earlier in the week it was earlier in the week it was no actually it was there sorry it was uh the, the the thursday right so entry one of the entries was here the second entry was uh was when it pulled back to 50% right there with the stop loss just below the lows. So I've only been triggered into two positions as prices have pulled back. Now I did had the opportunity to actually take this, uh, this trade here and take some profit off. But um, I didn't head it into the weekend. Reason being is because I think that the Euro, um, if there's any kind of shock, um, 
uh, election results, I think the euro should now eventually weaken. And this actually, uh, hopefully, in terms of risk sentiment, I'm hoping to get a bit more out of uh, these trades. So typically, I would take this off at a one to one um, around here once prices came down, trigger me into that position there and then end up going higher. And then I'd have one position on, but I thought I would uh, hold this trade to see if uh, it could move a bit higher. And hopefully on the uh, on the Monday open, it does. Right. So that's really where we are. And in terms of it being a, uh, a bit of a uh, demand zone, a daily demand zone. So that's you know, that's where the demand zone is. And then prices came back into this area here. And this is where uh, the entries were. So two positions at the moment uh, in on that, which uh, one is profitable, one is kind of pulled back to a bit of a break even. So let's see what happens um, come uh, the uh, Sunday evening. Um, the New Zealand CAD, again, um, entering into this really kind of based on uh, the Canadian dollar um, data that came out on um I think it was Friday and I think it was the uh, GDP. So uh, GDP came out slightly lower than expected. And again, this is a daily demand zone around here. So I've entered in market order there and I've got a 50% uh, retracement here and then I've got 95% retracement here. Now I'm only in one position at the moment. I do think this has the potential to go higher as we've kind of pulled back. If we look at this on a daily time frame chart, you can see it prices have pulled back nicely into this zone. So that's quite nice for some upside potential. I think with the uh, Canadian dollar, even if they don't necessarily um, uh, cut rates in July, uh, I think they will be cutting in September and the uh, New Zealand dollar are not looking to cut this year uh, so far. Anyway, of course, the data uh, has to support that. But ultimately, what we know now um, the New Zealand dollar should be uh, the one to strengthen at the moment against the uh, the Canadian dollar. And we've pulled back to a to quite a nice uh, a nice area and pulled back enough. Matter of fact, how many pips is that? It's probably maybe around about two hundred pips or so. So uh, so yeah, that's really where I am with the New Zealand CAD and uh, just a few more updates. Uh, the Australian uh, Swiss, which we got into or which I got into a couple of weeks ago is um looking quite nice my final target is uh around here the 60 50 area i uh, managed to get in on two positions on this trade which uh both were both profitable so my third position now is uh in holding it uh to these highs also with what as well i've trailed my stop up to i think around the uh 0.5940 area so pretty much I've locked in uh, profits so pretty much like that's now where we are with this trade so regardless of whether it kind of, kind of comes down and stops me out that's going to be a profitable trade um, so let's see what happens there and the New Zealand Swiss is a trade that I've been in since uh, last week Friday as well or last week Thursday um, and I'm in two positions and again with this uh, trade, I could have actually taken profit um, uh, at, at least a one to one and that should be a profitable trade. But again, I think we could go a lot higher with this uh, with this trade. So I do want to hold it a bit longer somewhere around these uh, 553 areas, somewhere around there. So um, that's where we are also as well. I have moved my stop losses on the, both of these trades up to break even. So um, I can't lose on any of these trades. So New Zealand Swiss uh, hopefully should go higher. Um, and this week will be quite um, uh, important for the Swiss franc because I think they've got their uh, inflation data coming out. Now, if inflation data comes out and it comes in lower, then I think prices are going to move higher. Now, if inflation um, uh, comes in higher than expected, then actually I might start to actually uh, take some profit off because um, I do think that, uh, that we could get get some uh, some Swiss franc uh, strength. So um, again, break even trades. Uh, potentially profitable trades and let's see what happens with these uh with that new zealand swiss trade so um yeah 
this week. Let's get into the now week ahead fundamentals and data. So uh, looking at the week ahead, 1st of July in the United States, investors attention will focus on payroll reports and the FOMC minutes. That's going to be big. Uh, other important releases include ISM manufacturing and services, PMI, jolts, job openings, factory orders and foreign trade data in Europe, parliamentary elections in France and the United States will shape the week. Also, inflation rate for the euro, Germany and Switzerland will be of paramount, will be of paramount interest in Germany. Factory orders and industrial production data will be critical while Canada will release the IV PMIs and uh, Japan's tank and manufacturing uh, index and China's manufacturing and services PMI will be important. Finally, manufacturing PMI data will be published for Canada. So uh, that's what we've got this week. So quite a lively week in terms of data. Now, uh, looking at this week's fundamentals and going to the daily on the uh, dollar index. And I use the equally weighted dollar index. And if you want to uh, know why I use the equally weighted dollar index and how and what calculations and symbol to kind of put into your trading view charts, if you trade with trading view, of course, you uh, there's a video uh, I will put at the top right hand side of the screen and you can click on that and uh, get that information. So uh, equally weighted dollar index. Um, Looking at this, and I'm still probably a little bit more biased to dollar buying at the moment, although um, although there are reasons to definitely look for sell trades. Um, there was the uh, uh, PCE data that came out this week. So let's go to the United States. And it says here the Federal Reserve's preferred measure of underlying U.S. inflation decelerated in May, bolstering the case for lower interest rates later this year. So um, it says the report offers um, welcome news for Fed officials seeking to commence with rate cuts in the coming months, though policymakers will likely want to see additional reports like this one first. They recently dialed back their projections for rate cuts this year following worse than expected inflation data in the first quarter. So um, we still kind of have a bit more of a hawkish Fed, but the data isn't supporting that hawkishness at the moment. So um, when it comes to looking at the uh, the dollar, you would have to say that dollar is in a bit of an ex expensive area. But I think obviously the, uh, the data this week in terms of uh, FOMC and... Um, non-farm payrolls are going to really determine the direction of travel uh, going forward. So if you do want to be a seller of the uh, the dollar at the moment and position yourself short uh, for maybe an anticipation of some um, inflation or some data that would support rate cuts, then you're looking for uh, any type of short from now. If you're looking for uh, still long uh, uh bias on the on the dollar then you're looking at really a pullback into these zones and then what you're looking for is uh is going to the uh, dollar crosses and looking for buys as prices come back into the uh, demand zone then you're looking for buy trades on the um on the, any kind of dollar crosses so that's really where we are in terms of the dollar it's going to be a big week this week um so the US dollar yen and we've blown past that 160 this week and there was actually reports um, uh, basically saying that in fact now the line in the sand um, in terms of intervention may actually be at the 165 so somewhere way up here right into if, if the uh, Bank of Japan are going to intervene again so um, yeah, this week wasn't great trading for the yen. And so, uh, you know, the, uh, the dollar keeps pushing uh, higher. And uh, but going to Japan, they actually had some decent news this week. And it was talking about inflation. So inflation in Tokyo picked up in June on the back of higher energy prices and industrial output. <coughs> Excuse me. 
uh, rose more than expected in May, likely keeping the Bank of Japan on track to consider an interest rate hike as early as July. In July, and Tokyo's figures are leading indicators of the national data to be released in July. And uh, you can see here that the um, uh, Tokyo's inflation accelerates above the 2% in June. So it kind of took a bit of a dip, but now it's re accelerating over that 2% target. Um, but it's still really not enough to keep uh to, to to get traders to kind of buy the yen and come out of uh higher yielding uh currencies like the dollar so we're just really seeing the uh the carry trade uh continue to uh to work out carry trade basically is where investors are searching for higher yielding uh assets and currencies and really kind of selling the uh the lower yielding one right so <clears throat> and making a profit on the difference between the two so um if you are looking for buy trades on the dollar yen um i think that is really what you're looking for pull back into that zone before looking at going long now again with the dollar this week it will depend upon uh what non-farms are saying and fomc is saying because um the dollar if, if again uh, data comes out uh, uh, supporting potential rate uh, uh, cuts this week or at least in September I should say rate cuts this week but rate cuts in September then um, the dollar may start to sell off this might be actually capped to the upside so let's see what happens here um, but my, my, my bias would be more to buy the dollar over the yen uh, dollar Swiss, uh, same thing with the dollar Swiss of course my bias at the moment is to buy the dollar over the Swiss franc uh, the Swiss franc again has got some inflation data this week so that's going to be uh, important but if you are looking to buy the uh, the dollar any pullbacks if you're looking to buy the Swiss franc I think probably now is a decent time to look for actually some shorts this week in in hopes that the uh, in inflation data for the Swiss franc comes in uh, higher than expected or higher than forecasted at least so let's see what happens there but um Ultimately, these, these, these are the areas that you're looking towards when it comes to uh, buy trades on the dollar or the Swiss. Um, but again, my bias is more to is more looking towards uh, upside potential. Uh, dollar CAD this week. Dollar CAD. Um, again, we had some inflation data news uh, come out for the Canadian dollar, which actually supported uh, Canadian buying but it was seen as a bit of a blip it was seen as a bit temporary so <clears throat> the uh, Canadian dollar didn't necessarily appreciate as much as was expected and then there was some GDP data that came out on Friday which uh, wasn't great for the uh, Canadian dollar um, so we're still kind of stuck in this you know, it's little little bit of a range between the uh, 13740s and 136 uh, 20s so uh, this week so if you are looking for um, uh, dollar U um, US dollar buyers pull back into that zone is decent um, or if you're looking for kind of sells then I would probably suggest looking at a pullback into uh, this higher supply zone before looking at going short yeah somewhere around here or just a bit higher uh, looking at the British pound and before we get into the pound this is just a quick reminder that we uh have the enrollment that opens at trading 180 on the 2nd of july so if you've been waiting to join uh the mentoring and the uh, the discord group <clears throat> 2nd of july is where uh, i open and um been getting a few inquiries with regards to um the uh, the course content and uh, the information that you need is, is on the website, but just to kind of show you what you kind of get some access to. Uh, one of the things is the fundamental analysis uh, spreadsheet that I go through um, pretty much on a, on a weekly basis with the uh, private members. And um, this is where we uh, rank the currencies. <clears throat> And also as well, every Wednesday and sometimes Thursday, we go over and we have a live group trading call um, where, uh, you know, we can uh, go over and where we do go over the, uh, the the latest analysis and where we can uh, look at the trades that we've taken, et cetera, et cetera. And so um, 
I go into each currency in a lot more detail as well than what I do on the uh, YouTube videos. And so uh, we have our you know currency summary reports and um, also as well, we have a members area where we see uh, where I post all the trading videos and member videos, uh, not for YouTube <clears throat> and exclusive content there as well and trade setups, etc. So uh, lots going on in the, uh, in the in the in the in the Discord group. So if you do want to be a member, um, go to trading180.com. Uh, it opens in a couple of days. And so getting back to the pound <clears throat> and the analysis. So really, we kind of broken through this uh, this demand zone. Uh, the pound dollar wasn't really a trade or pair that I'm looking towards taking, but um, uh, if you are looking to buy, I think there's a little bit of a demand zone right here. And, uh, but I don't think I would really want to, um, yeah, like I said, I'm not really keen on taking this pair. The, <clears throat> the pound though, in terms of, uh, some fundamentals, we, uh, there was some, <clears throat> some decent news that came out. Uh, the Britain's economy bounced out of recession with the strongest growth in more than two years and faster than previously estimated with services and consumer spending both driving the gains. And it says here that stronger growth may also make the Bank of England more concerned about lingering uh, inflationary pressure, potentially holding off its first uh, reduction in interest rates since the pandemic. At the margins, this all may make the Bank of England a bit less comfortable cutting rates, uh, uh, interest rates in August, Dales said. So Dales is a seems like an analyst. But um, <clears throat> if uh, if the pound, if the Bank of England do postpone uh, cutting rates in August, I think the British pound should actually end up uh, rising in value. So this should be a decent uh, area to look for a potential buy. But um, uh, at the moment, it does look like the, uh, the 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 pound is looking to cut, and the Bank of England looking to cut in August. So, um, I would say be cautious with the pound dollar. The, the divergence isn't as big in terms of uh, uh, central bank policy. So, um, because they're quite close, whether they're going to the British pound might cut in August or September, and the, the Federal Reserve are looking at cutting in September. There's not really much gap between them. So, um, I prefer you know, trades where there's massive gaps in terms of um, divergences in uh, central bank policy. So for me, uh, this pair isn't necessarily a, trade, a pair that I would look to trade. But if you are looking to trade this, then you're looking at either buying at the moment or you're looking to sell into uh, the nearest uh, supply zone. Looking at the British pound, again, the pound is just making higher highs uh, against the uh, against the yen and the yen just weakening across the board. Now, pulling back, I think, is going to have to be the uh, the trade of choice. So I do think that you should, I say you, but if anything, the um, uh, the path of least resistance is continuing to the upside. Again, even if we do get some sort of intervention from the Bank of Japan, I do think that overall the carry trade should still be in effect and any deeper pullbacks are likely to be buys, um, in my opinion. Uh, looking at the euro dollar <clears throat> and the euro dollar this week uh, went a bit more sideways, a bit more of an auction. Um, but again, it's all re really going to depend on what happens, uh, obviously, with the French elections, if they do come out and the the, the uh, elections are disappointing, I think the euro is likely to sell off and continue selling off. Um, but if there are any surprises in the elections, as in better news for Macron, then in fact the euro could rally a bit. But um, again, I think the path of these resistance is still to the downside. So any uh, um, uh, uh, data that comes out supporting uh, euro sales i think we should get a decent uh, sell off so any pullbacks are shorting opportunities in at least in the first half of the week heading into uh, maybe the uh, the data where we get um, you know fomc and um, and non farm payrolls but i do think the path of resistance is to the downside on the euro dollar uh, euro yen again euro yen covered this but um, I do think now that 
Um, in terms of buying or selling, I wouldn't want to do both on either. So not really trading this pair if I'm going to buy the um, the uh, any currency against or anything against the euro. Um, I'm already in the uh, silver euro pair, so I'd rather buy the uh, buy silver or gold against the euro rather than um, any. Well, the, the the yen at the moment in terms of risk sentiment but I do think technically that's actually a really nice area to look for potential uh, long trades nice support or resistance turn support with a demand zone so that's quite nice going forward um, euro pounds uh, I think again we should see more downside potential that's what you would think um, and we could see it of course if the French election has come out uh, against the uh, the uh, the French uh, ruling party currently, then um, the the euro is just going to weaken against all currencies. So let's see what happens there. But technically, if you are looking to get short, you'd have to really look for um, uh, pull back into supply, some sort of supply zone. Um, but I think you can actually take this depend on whether it gaps down, gaps up, because it could do either, right? Because there's a lot of volatility um, around election time. So let's see what happens with that. Um, but I would say the, uh, the, the the UK and the Bank of England are in a better situation uh, than Europe at the moment. Uh, Australian dollar, US dollar, the Australian dollar, uh, really the, uh, the bank, uh, the RBA of the bank that are looking to cut rates. In fact, there's even talk of them hiking rates potentially this year. So um, I think any pullbacks into a demand zone are decent for a buy. doesn't look great in terms of location, um, but ultimately if this is the most recent uh, expensive area, and this is the most, you know, this is the most cheapest area. You want to trade around these uh, these lows around here on, on pullbacks. So if you're looking to buy the Australian dollar, if you're looking to buy the US dollar, then I would say probably a bit more of a uh, move to the upside, fresher area of demand, sorry, supply before looking at going short. Looking at gold, uh, gold's pulled back a bit. Um, and I do think gold is still likely to be a buy as we head over the medium to long term um, any pullbacks into this zone I think are nice buying opportunities now with gold um, the uh, it says here that Bank of America team put out a note this morning suggesting that gold could hit 3,000 an ounce over the next 12 to 18 months and this is a bit of an opinion piece by the way and it says to be clear this in itself um, means very little no one has a crystal ball so no one knows what the price of anything will be in the future but forecasts will have their uses of course they do um, firstly you can use them as a test of sentiment uh, once upon a time three thousand dollars an ounce for gold would have seemed like a bit like two hundred dollar oil an extreme call and likely a sign of a top now that three thousand dollars is less than thirty percent away it doesn't seem as drastic so um yeah, three thousand dollars doesn't seem uh, that far away, and even if their forecasts are at two thousand seven hundred or price gold comes in at two thousand seven hundred, two thousand eight hundred, um, you still got a lot of upside right now if you're buying at two thousand three hundred, right, two thousand two hundred and eighty. So, um, their 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 forecasts don't have to come true or be exact, um, for you to make money on this. They just have to be kind of half right to the upside, right? So um, I think any pullbacks into a nice fresher area of demand is going to be a really nice move to the upside. And especially when you think about <clears throat> uh, the macro side of things where, um, you know, the US is looking to, and the Federal Reserve are looking to cut rates eventually, of course. Um, there's the potential economic cycle where, uh, you know, there are, you know, uh, recession talks on the horizon, even things like, you know, risk sentiment um, and war in the Middle East uh, potentially escalating. So uh, gold at the moment um, over the medium to long term should always really be a buy. Um, so, yeah, let's see what happens with this and the S&P this week. Um, let's see what happens. I think the S&P is likely to be, again, a continued buy. Um, but it should really want to pull back uh, to some degree because 
as the Federal Reserve look to cut rates, that obviously introduces cheap money, cheap borrowing, and the stock market ends up liking that and going higher. Now, uh, from a um, stats perspective, it says here, a strong first half for the S&P has typically led to another solid run in the remaining six months. So since the early 1950s, when the index climbs more than 10% through June, it rises by a median of roughly 10% in the second half, data compiled by Bloomberg shows. While the market is historically weaker in the first half of the US presidential election years, this is the second best January-June run since 1928, according to Ned Davis Research. With stocks bucking seasonal patterns, it leaves room for the S&P to pull back between 5 to 8% starting in the coming weeks, per Jeffrey Hirsch, editor of the Stock Traders Almanac, who correctly forecast the rally after the 2008 global financial crisis. So 5 to 8% pullback, if we're looking at that, should be somewhere around where. So 5% might be actually all the way down into the 520s right yeah so that would be about five percent pullback eight percent would be somewhere around these lows around here so where you've got decent demand zone around these lows here so if you're looking for about a five to eight percent pullback then you might want to skip this level here the five threes uh, five three fifties and maybe wait for the five twos right that would take us to maybe around about five percent and eight percent will take us to around the five thousands so yeah let's see what happens with that and then obviously if you're looking for that and if it does you know you can trade it to the downside and you can trade it to the upside right but um i think as we uh head into the um election cycle and statistically we know uh that um historically uh, since the 1950s it climbs another 10 percent any pullback should be buying opportunities right as if it does even pull back but um if it does you can trade it to the downside and if it you know and if not if you're just waiting for a pullback then just wait patiently for a nice little buy and then at, at maybe the five percent area so looking quite nice uh and a nice trade plan for the s p 500 so uh guys that's it for this week uh don't forget as well just in case you kind of skip through the video to get to certain points that we do have the mentoring opening on the 2nd of july um so a couple of days from now and um if you are keen to join uh please do so uh look forward to working with you hope you have a great trading week take care and speak to you all soon.